Hello and welcome to A to Z of My Mental Head. That is what this channel is called. My name is Charlotte, if you didn't already know that. This week I'm making a video because it is Eating Disorders Awareness Week and I thought I would make a video in honour of it. Is that the right saying? I wanted to talk about the misconceptions surrounding eating disorders. Obviously, you might disagree with some of the things that I'm saying, but I think they're kind of pretty much standard. If you do disagree with anything that I have to say, or you have anything to add, then let me know down below and we can discuss it or, you know, whatever. That's what I'm going to be talking about this week, so I will not ramble on too much. I'll just get on with it. You don't have to be thin to have an eating disorder. Shocking, right? Eating disorders are mental illnesses. The size and shape of a person bears no resemblance to the severity of their illness. Now, I've talked a bit about this before on my channel and this comes up especially in terms of when you're trying to get help from services because there is a cutoff point with the BMI threshold, especially when you're trying to access inpatient treatment, but more so as an adult because when you're an adolescent they'll pretty much take you into hospital at any BMI, but with being an adult you have to be under a certain BMI to be accepted for inpatient treatment. And there seems to be this belief that you have to be a certain BMI to have a problem. And what they don't seem to realise, if you've had an eating disorder from a young age, obviously going through to being an adult, there is more damage done to your body and your metabolism. Your weight will fluctuate, you will gain weight, you will lose weight. And you know, obviously your BMI will go up and down. The mental illness is still there. But the longer it goes on, the more ingrained it is in you and the harder it is to treat. They don't seem to accept that it doesn't matter what your BMI is, the, the eating disorder is as prevalent as it was if your BMI is 11, if it is 18, if it is 20, if it is 22, the eating disorder is there. Some people's natural BMI is higher so they can be just as sick as someone reaching a lot lower BMI to them getting to a BMI of 15, 16 is just as sick as someone else reaching a BMI of 11. It doesn't matter. BMI and weight should not be taken into account when treating an eating disorder. The next misconception is that anorexics don't eat. I've been very open about the fact that I go for long periods of time without eating at all. But the majority of people with eating disorders will maintain a restrictive diet, meaning yes, they do eat, but it's very few calories and they may have compensatory factors, laxatives, exercise or purging. I've faced comments when eating things like a salad or a plate of vegetables, such as Oh well done, that's great. Oh what a big pile of food. That looks a big meal. Which is ridiculously unhelpful. Whilst I know rationally that's not enough to eat, comments like that fuel the eating disorder, making me feel like it's not okay to eat more. Someone with anorexia usually restricts their diet and might go for a few days with little to no food, but more often than not, they do eat. The next misconception is that only young girls have eating disorders. Whilst eating disorders are more common in younger people, younger people who don't recover grow up to be suffering from chronic eating disorders. Therefore, eating disorders outside of young teenage girls do exist. Hello. Both. Shut up. Both younger and older. My first inpatient admission, I remember a young girl being sent across from the children's hospital for a few days before she started getting too distressed at the environment as there were some really unwell patients. She must have only been about six or seven. It was just heartbreaking seeing like this tiny little child, just, she was a baby, just a baby. She should have been at home playing with Barbies. And then at the other end of the spectrum, during my next admission there was a lady who must have been in her 60s and she was probably the most unwell lady I have ever seen and met. You know, she was very, very frail and whilst I was there she suffered from a heart attack. She never came back from hospital. You don't have to be a young 
teenage girl to suffer from an eating disorder. Many years ago, I did some volunteer work for people with learning disabilities. There was a guy who had Down syndrome because my mum worked there as well. I knew his situation because she told me about it. And he used to sit and touch his body, talking to himself and just muttered to himself about feeling fat. He looked very malnourished and he looked mentally anguished. And after eating, he used to disappear into the toilet and come out covered in sick. And I knew from my experience, even if mum hadn't told me what was going on, we, me and mum both tried speaking to the staff and speaking to his key workers to try and speak about getting him some help because obviously people with Down syndrome can suffer with heart problems and with the electrolyte issues with bulimia I was worried so his staff took him to the doctors and they refused point blank to accept that somebody with Down syndrome could have an eating disorder hmm yeah it's a bit fucked up but what can you do? Only females have eating disorders. Strangely, mental illness doesn't discriminate against gender. 1.6 million people in the UK have eating disorders. I was shocked when I saw that figure. 1.6 million people. And that's only people that are seeking treatment and seeking help. And of that 1.6 million people, 11% are men. And again, that's only the men that have sought help and sought treatment. I have no doubt that that figure is far higher. Obviously being a female, I don't really feel able to say very much else. I don't really know what I can say. There is a website that offers support for men with eating disorders that I will link down below. Big Macs cure everything. Pizza Hut cures anorexia. Happy Meals cure depression. And Subway cures OCD. Well, wouldn't that be fantastic? Except it's bullshit. For years, my dad said he'd give me 50 quid to eat a Big Mac, despite knowing that I was a vegetarian because he believed that that was the cure or something. To be honest, if I thought that he would have paid I probably would have done it, but he never pays his bets, so. For people who've not been through an eating disorder, it's hard to understand that eating itself doesn't fix you, it actually causes you more distress. But it's the consistent eating and the maintaining a healthy weight that helps the brain heal. For the brain to start healing, your weight and intake need to stay consistent for at least a year. I have talked about this in a previous video, but in case you've missed it, I'll talk about it briefly here. Your brain is the last thing to be healed, as it needs to be able to trust your body to be providing it with adequate nutrition and not to return it to a malnourished, underweight state. Eating disorders are superficial. This is probably one of the biggest misconceptions because an eating disorder is about changing your weight, changing your body. People think that it is a diet and about looks, but often it can start off that way. It is often about deeper issues and about self-esteem, possibly trauma, or a way of dealing with other things going on. Like for me, it's about punishment. So if I feel fat or ugly, then my way of dealing with it is my eating disorder. If someone upsets me, I use my eating disorder. So it's not just about the superficial things, it's about everything. Just as self-harm I use as a way of punishing myself for if I feel fat or ugly or if someone upsets me. It's the same with my eating. It's not just about the way I look, it's about everything. And I think that is one of the hardest things to understand for people because they do see it just as vain, superficial diet food looks thing. But the last thing is probably the joint biggest misconception is that eating disorders are a choice. No, there is no element of choice. I can understand how this is hard for people to understand as surely the person suffering is the one making an active choice to either restrict or purge or take laxatives. But it isn't as simple as that. The physical act of what they're doing comes from the brain and in the brain is the mental illness. It is a mental illness just as somebody with depression crying for example isn't a choice. They can't choose to be happy which by the way is one of my least favourite sayings. Choose happiness. You can't choose happiness. Happiness isn't a choice. Mm, mm, mm. Sometimes, not always, as I've just said, there's a trauma that triggered off the eating disorder, or at least contributed to it. Would you then say that it's a choice? Would you then say that it's the eating disorder sufferer's fault? No. So, 
That is the end of this video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please like this video, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Check out my blog. I am currently vlogging this week and next week, so there'll be a video shortly, hopefully. Share this video around as well if you want. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye. The next misc, the next mi, nah. Nah.